Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson with Business Communication for Success, starting with Chapter 1, of course, Effective Business Communication. Our learning objectives for this course, or for this chapter, actually, are recognize the importance of communication in gaining a better understanding of yourself and others. Communication is definitely key. It will help you in your professional, scholastic, and also uh, your personal life. Explain how communication skills help you to solve problems, learn new things, and build your career. Uh, most people who don't have effective communication skills do not move or evolve in their career. Uh, define communication and describe communication as a process. Uh, there are uh, some great videos uh, that are, are located in your Canvas module that talk about the process of communication. A couple of clicks to go to the next one. We want to identify and describe the eight essential components of communication. That is very, very important. We'll key in on those. Uh, if I go too fast, you can always go back, pause the video, and then also the lecture is posted uh, in the module as well so that you can see the actual slide. Identify and describe two modules of communication. Identify and describe five types of communication context. Discuss and provide several examples of each of the two main responsibilities of a, of a business communicator. And those are our objectives uh, for the chapter. So it's always good to know and understand what your objectives are before going into the actual chapter, because you know, like, hey, I remember at the very beginning, they said something, this, this is something that we should key in on. All right, so why is it important to communicate well? Well, you know, if you have family members, a spouse, significant other, whoever you have, children, you know that communication is very, very important uh, going from you to them and from them to you as well. Uh, and also, if you have a job and you have a manager, uh, you know for a fact that communication is definitely key. Uh, business communication is a problem solving activity that helps identify the following, the actual situation. So for instance, uh, we don't have enough Coca-Cola left in the 7-Eleven. The possible communication strategies. Do I send an email? Do I pick up the phone to call a corporate office and let them know? Uh, the best course of action. Should we order a bunch more? Should we wait for the regular shipment because we're only a couple days behind? What do we do? Uh, the best way to design the message. Uh, the best way to deliver the actual message. And we'll talk about those options and have an assignment about like how do you prefer uh, to communicate as an individual because it's no right all well i mean there's some ways that are more right than others in certain situations uh but uh when there's a level playing field i might want to communicate uh via video and you may want to communicate via email and the other person may want to communicate uh, via text uh, communication influences your thinking about yourself and others right so uh, when you hear yourself communicating uh, or when you see how people respond to your communication, uh, it, it definitely affects how you think about yourself. Uh, one thing that I always laugh about, if, if you ever hear yourself on a message or in somebody's answer machine or their voicemail, you say, oh, I really sound like that. Yes, that's exactly how you sound. Uh, but we don't sound like that to, uh, to ourselves. Uh, while communicating, you communicate uh, your self concept. So uh, definitely, you know, people, uh, their, the confidence that they have in themselves, uh, that is exhibited by, uh, the way that they, uh, communicate and it shows your self-concept or, you know, how do you conceive yourself? Uh, communication skills help you to understand others, their values and their priorities. Uh, because remember, communication is not me telling you one, two, three, and you hearing four, five, six. That's called miscommunication. We're talking about for this semester communication. Uh, and so, that when you know when you understand what I'm saying, then I understand you, and, and you communicate back to me. Then I understand your value, the priorities, and what's most important to you. Communication influences how you learn. Uh, improving speaking and writing requires effort, right? It just doesn't come easy to everyone. Some it comes a lot easier, uh, it comes a lot easier to them than others. Uh, but it does require effort, a uh, persistence. You have to uh, learn to find your particular voice and what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Uh, Self-correction, you have to say, oh, you know what, I, I shouldn't have uh, used that terminology. I said, you know, people got a very negative reaction to it. I'm going to eliminate that from my vocabulary. So you need to learn how to correct yourself. <clears throat> communication skills are desired by business and industry, right? Uh, if you don't have good communication skills, it's highly unlikely that you will uh, be able to secure a job. I know an individual, one of the most brilliant people I've ever worked with, she used to work for me. Um, super high IQ, I'm sure, you know, way beyond mine uh, and way beyond most people. Um, I believe her brother, uh, he, um, uh, I believe he, he won a, a Nobel Peace Prize for science. So they're super smart, but her communication skills weren't great. Work was great. Everything was great. But it's can she communicate that to someone else and tell them, hey, I'm great. 
and a lot of times the answer was no. Uh, so communication skills are desired by business industry and industry. Uh, oral and written communication proficiencies are sought by employers. Uh, so when you sit down in an interview, if you can't communicate with them, then it's a highly high likelihood that they won't hire you. Ability to communicate clearly aids career growth, right? So you can communicate what you require as an individual, and you also can communicate, uh, you know, what you need in terms of work. But and when I say require, require in terms of salary, benefits, and things of that nature. Uh, defining communication, uh, communication process of understanding and sharing meaning. <clears throat> The actual process you have understanding, right? So remember I said if it's no understanding and it's miscommunication, meaning, what is the meaning of what I'm saying and sharing. And the whole communication process is me sharing one, two, three with you. If I share one, two, three with you, you know the meaning of one, two, three, and that's what you understand. Then we have communication. But if I share one, two, three with you and you understand four, five, six, then we don't have understanding. Uh, there are eight essential components of communication. Uh, so if I go too fast on this one, this is one that you should pause on, make sure that you know and understand these. Uh, the source, uh, images, um, oh, I'm sorry, imagines, creates, and sends the message, right? So when they say imagine, that means me conjuring up the, the you know, the communication in my mind that I created and then I send the message out and I'm the source. The message, that's the actual message, is the stimulus or meaning produced by uh, the source or for the receiver. So I'm the source is produced by me going to you. You are the receiver. The channel is the way in which the message travels. So this message is traveling via video. Uh, the receiver uh, receives the message that you analyzes and interprets it in ways both intended and unintended by the source. So some things I want to communicate and that's a plus and it happens. Other things uh, not trying to communicate, but that still comes across. Uh, feedback uh, messages the receiver uh, sends uh, back to the source. So that's the feedback that you send back to me. Uh, environment, atmosphere uh, where you send and receive the message. Right now it's going to be uh, via email because I'm going to uh, take this video. I'm gonna, oh, actually, this video is going to be posted in Canvas, so not email. Uh, so it's going to be posted somewhere where you can access it. Uh, environment, uh, so like I said, atmosphere where you can send and receive the message. Context, setting, scene, and expectations of the individuals involved, right? So your expectation is that I explain the chapter to you via lecture and my expectation is that you understand it. Uh, and interference, anything that blocks uh, slash changes the source or intended message uh, or meaning of the message. Uh, you know, so interference for me could be uh, the fact that the Saints and Panthers game is on right now. Maybe I'm, you know, paying attention to that. And that could be the same for you. You could be sitting there watching the game as well. And then I post this and you say, well, I don't really have time. I'll listen to, I'll try and do both at the same time. Or somebody's speaking with you while you're trying to listen to the video. So this is just a transactional model. Uh, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. It just shows you exactly what we went over. Message feedback goes from the source. This is me. I'm the source to the receiver. Uh, then you become the source and you say, hey, uh, Demetrius, I didn't like the way that you did your video and you send feedback to me. Uh, then I become the receiver. So source to receiver, then it switches. You become the source and I become uh, the receiver. Uh, and they have negotiated meaning. So you see both for receiver slash source. And that's how you know how you see two way communication. So there are five types of uh, communication context. So you have <clears throat> Intrapersonal involves one person, often called self self talk. So that doesn't mean you're crazy. Uh, self talk is is great. Uh, so you know my children, they run track, and a lot of times you have to you know uh, self motivate and say things to yourself, and no one understand that if you're standing on the line by yourself uh, and you have to get your confidence up and everything. You know, you say certain things like, you know, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to win the race. Uh, you know, you'll see this a lot of sports psychologists. Uh, are hired to work with uh, with with athletes uh, so that they can know and understand uh, and get themselves in the uh, in the right uh, mindset uh, before performing. Uh, interpersonal involves two uh, uh, people, ranges from intimate uh, and very personal to formal and impersonal. A group dynamic process where a small number of people are engaged in a conversation. Uh, public one person speaks, writes a message to a group of people. Right, so I'm speaking and it's come out to you as a group. And then mass uh, means, uh, sen means sending a single message uh, to a group, right? Mass communication. A communicator is prepared, right? Proper planning prevents poor performance. If you had any of my courses before, you've heard me say that. Uh, the prepared communicator is organized, right? So in this instance, I'm you know, not saying it's just me, but you know, I'm organized. I, I took the PowerPoint. I read through the PowerPoint. I know what the content is in the chapter. I'm prepared. 
uh, narrows the focus uh, to a few key points and considers how to present them, right? So as I went through the PowerPoint before presenting it to you, I said, oh, you know, maybe I should get this, get this as an example. Oh, this isn't a good example. And I thought it through. Considers how to link, link key points together uh, for an audience, specifically for you as an audience. Uh, the prepared communicator is clear, right? You want to be clear, concise, and crisp in your communication. Has clarity on the matter to be communicated. Avoids jargon. I don't want to use all these things. You know, you have to refer to the ATP site uh, and this isn't that, right? I don't want to confuse people. I want you to know and understand what I'm saying. I don't want to use jargon, industry jargon that, that people don't understand. Uh, possesses good written and oral presentation skills, right? Uh, so can you write and communicate and can you orate and, and communicate as well? Uh, uses technology as appropriate. I feel it's appropriate to use videos uh, in these classes, especially since they're 100 percent online. It uh, sort of diminishes uh, the digital divide between us because we're not uh, meeting face to face, not shaking your hand and saying, hey, I'm Demetrius Wilson and I'm going to be the instructor for this class. Uh, the prepared communicator is concise and punctual, right? Uh, and, and punctual in terms of online class, that means that you need to have everything up and ready for that week uh, for uh, your students. Uh, if it was a, you know, uh, on campus class, I would need to be there on time uh, and start on time. Uh, I want to state points clearly. I want to support points with clear evidence in a linear way. And uh, I want to be sensitive to time constraints. Uh, I had a professor uh, when I was in school and uh, she would just keep going, keep going. Class is supposed to be out at 145. It's two o'clock. She's still going and the rest of us. We still have to go get to a different class. But she was, you know, very enthused about the topic of economics. So uh, so she just loved it. And, uh, you know, it's kind of got wrapped up into it. So I understand. Uh, communicator is ethical. Uh, the ethical communicator is egalitarian, uh, speaks and writes in a way that is comprehensible and relevant to all listeners and readers, not just some, not just to a subset that I want to appease. I want it to be uh, applicable and be able to communicate to everyone. Uh, unifies the audience by using ideas and language that are appropriate for all listeners slash readers, right? So it has to be appropriate for everyone, not just, like I said, a small subset that I may like more than others. Uh, the ethical communicator is respectful, right? I want to always be respectful. I don't want to send things in all caps uh, with a bunch of exclamation points like I'm yelling at you or cursing at you. Uh, through email or through text, uh, communicates with passion and enthusiasm, uh, but not in an overly obnoxious way. Uh, respects the audience's time and intelligence, right? I respect your time, right? So that's why I'm going to make my, my lectures not, they're not going to be an hour long for online, like in the classroom. Yeah, we'll be lecturing for quite some time, but these are, you know, be fairly sure that we could be from anywhere from 15 to 30 minutes, right? Get the understanding, do your reading, do your quiz, do your homework, and you'll be good to go. Uh, and I also want to respect your intelligence. I don't want to, you know, although I don't want to use a bunch of jargon, I don't want to put it at a fifth grade level uh, because I know you guys understand much more than that. <clears throat> uh, the ethical communicator is trustworthy, right? You want to trust and believe in what I'm saying. Uh, not, not that I'm, you know, making any of this stuff up. Uh, does not uh, intentionally omit, delete, or take information out of context to prove a point. So I'm not going to look at this context in this in this PowerPoint and then take some out. But you know, I don't like the slide because of this. I'm going to take it out. Now, there's certain slides that I took out because I was like, oh, well, we don't need these additional slides. But there aren't slides that I take out because oh, I don't believe in a communicator being ethical. Uh, does not pretend to know something which uh, he or she doesn't. I, we don't all don't know everything, right? And we all make mistakes. I joke around at work. I, I tell them I make 17.5 mistakes a day that it's OK. Nobody's changing my paycheck because I'm making a mistake. It's okay to make mistakes. You live, you learn, you grow, uh, and that, that's part of the process. Uh, the golden rule, right? We should all be abiding by the golden rule. Treat others the way you would like to be treated, and you know, and, and great things will happen. Good things will come to you uh, because you say, I want to be treated as ABC, so I'm going to treat everyone else as ABC, and uh, I would feel wronged if someone didn't treat me in return like ABC. And, and that's very, very uh, understandable. So the golden rule, remember, we don't want uh, to treat others uh, like the way they should be treated. You know, I'm not saying someone should be treated bad, but the way you feel they should be treated. But you want to treat others the way that you would actually like to be treated. Uh, so, you know, pretty short, pretty painless. Uh, we'll do that uh, for the chapters. Uh, we actually do have PowerPoints available for all these chapters, so it should be one for each one. Uh, this is the only one that you have to review this week. 
Uh, so it's a little bit lighter, but when you get into the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth week, eighth, ninth week, then you have additional uh, a chapter. So you'll get two lectures, uh, you know, two different modules that you have to complete and all of that. Uh, but welcome to the class. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to email me. Uh, I'm always here to assist. Uh, but uh, that's a great way. Uh, to start to uh, talk about and think about uh, business communications. I hope you all have a good day and a great week.